Is 2021 going to be the best year yet for Google Pixel fans? I think there's a decent chance it will be, and that's a great thing considering just how much of a mixed bag this series has been over the years. Early on, Pixel phones often didn't live up to their full potential, and recently anyone wanting a big screen Pixel has been largely out of luck. However, between the likely return of XL Pixels, updated hardware and software, and the debut of the first foldable Google phone, there is plenty to look forward to later this year. Before we get to the usual October launch season for high-end Pixels, we will of course have the Pixel 5a debuting this summer. An important phone for Google in terms of business, but for Pixel fans, it's basically looking like a cut-down version of the Pixel 4a 5g, and as such is already kind of a known quantity. Like we mentioned in our Pixel 5a video though, the fact that Google will have the 5a to fill that role of cheap 5g phone in 2021 frees it up to reintroduce a bigger premium Pixel later in the year. We shouldn't just assume Google hates big screened phones, it knows people buy phones with large displays in huge numbers, that's why it seems to be quietly preparing its Pixel UI to work better with devices that are far larger than any of its current 2020 Pixels. So it seems very likely the lack of a large Pixel last year will turn out to be kind of an aberration, and that to the relief of many Pixel fans we will indeed see a Pixel 6 XL. The next most interesting thing is the chip that the Pixel 6 series will likely run. If Google sticks with its mid-tier approach to Pixel processors, chances are it will use a Qualcomm SM7350. That's a successor to the Snapdragon 765 that we would expect to be branded as Snapdragon 775. So basically a generation on from the chip of the Pixel 5. And if you look at the leaks of what's coming in this new chip, it's basically a lot of what you would get from a 2020 flagship SoC, including premium features like support for 120Hz displays, up to 12 gigs of RAM and fast UFS 3.1 storage, which means we could be looking at a major improvement in terms of speed and computing power for the Pixel 6 when it arrives. That's important when it comes to the on-device AI features like Google Assistant, Live Transcribe, and of course that Pixel camera, which, let's be honest, does take its time processing photos even on a Pixel 5. Essentially, those mid to high-end chips are getting more powerful, and that means a faster Pixel 6 with more high-end features. There's also one big area that Google has basically no choice but to upgrade in the Pixel 6, and that is the main camera sensor. It's been five years of using fundamentally the same hardware in Pixel cameras, and sure, since the Pixel 1, Google has added things like optical stabilization and brighter lenses, but otherwise, all the year-to-year -year improvements have come from image processing. However, these days, Google isn't the only phone brand with great computational photography and image processing, and in the past year especially, even some of the cheaper flagships out there are bringing some heat to the Pixel camera, which is why a lot of Google watchers say this will be the year the Pixel camera finally gets that much-needed substantial hardware upgrade. We've already had a tantalizing look at what Google's HDR Plus technology can do when it's hacked onto phones with superior optics, like the OnePlus 8 Pro or Asus Zenfone 7 Pro, so it stands to reason that the Pixel features we all love will be even better with an upgraded sensor. And what's more, with the Pixel 5a seemingly getting that second rear camera, it also seems likely the Pixel 6 series will finally get a triple camera array in order to set itself apart from the rest of the series. Obviously, we'd expect it to combine wide, ultra-wide and telephoto shooters just as many other flagships have been doing for several years. This move is long overdue and should mean fans finally get a Pixel 6 camera that's as versatile as it is capable. Then there's the question of software. From many of the hidden features in the Android 12 developer preview, we can tell a major visual overhaul is coming just in time for those late 2021 pixels. Changes include easier one-handed use for apps, and tweaks throughout the system UI drawing influence from Samsung and Oppo's interfaces. Naturally, Google's upcoming phones will be among the first to enjoy this new look version of Android, just as they were the last few times Android's UI underwent substantial changes. No doubt we'll have a lot more to say on this new Android UI as it's unveiled in subsequent Android 12 betas, so stay tuned for more on the future look and feel of Android. Finally, there's the question of the foldable Pixel. This was first revealed by 9to5Google thanks to leaked documents, later corroborated by Sam Mobile who said Samsung would be making the foldable panel, and more recently YouTuber John Prosser who has a pretty good track record said that a foldable Pixel was indeed on the way, so it's pretty safe to say it's happening. This is uncharted territory for Google and kind of counter to its approach to smartphones in general. Google's MO has always been about kind of elevating run-of-the-mill phone hardware through services and AI, and foldables, on the other hand, represent hardware luxury and excess, the very bleeding edge of mobile technology. So a foldable should be expensive just out of necessity, much more so than any previous Pixel. 
The question then is how much of Google's traditional pixel approach will actually translate to a foldable. There are a couple of possibilities here. Google could aim for a more affordable foldable, perhaps shooting somewhere just over the $1,000 mark using the same lean internals as the Pixel 6. Or more tantalizingly, there could be a lot of potential for the foldable to be the all-out high-end Pixel that many fans have been missing for the past few years. And think about it, it's going to have to be expensive. That being the case, the extra cost of adding a high-end Snapdragon, perhaps more RAM and storage, faster charging, would be a drop in the bucket compared to the cost of foldable essentials like the hinge and the display. Besides which, the foldable market is a super premium high-end place, and top-end specs are basically just expected. There is real potential for Google to surprise us with its foldable Pixel, which would effectively be the first Google-branded Android tablet in more than five years. Combine that with the return of an XL phone, camera improvements, a massive visual overhaul for the Pixel UI, and significantly quicker performance, and it's clear to me that 2021 is going to be a very big deal indeed for Google phone hardware. Let us know what you're looking forward to seeing from Google later in the year, and subscribe so you don't miss all of our upcoming coverage. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.